you guys, I'm almost in Washington State, about 20 miles from Portland even, so I mean, I'm almost home on the home stretch, and uh, I want to talk about something. I just pulled out this little rest area that seems to have some shade, but um, the generator, the generator on board my RV. Well, John told me it doesn't work. He's never gotten it to work. It's never started up. I had an idea because the same exact thing happened in my other Ford, my 83 Tioga. For some reason, the generator would only fire up when the engine was running or when I was plugged into shore power. So I just pulled off like the last little store that I was at and uh, tested that theory and check this out. I got the engine running. bonus. John, what do you think of that? <laughs> I don't really know how to explain it except for the fact that um, it could be that the batteries, the deep cycle batteries are just too weak to handle the, the starter solenoid system of the generator. So it needs that extra punch. So when you're plugged into power, when you're running the uh, motor home, the alternator is also charging the deep cycle battery that's on board. You know, I haven't done any of my install yet, but that having that going and a little bit of extra volts going to the battery, that's enough to get the generator started. Now I'm not saying that maybe when I get my entire solar hookup and I've got solar and it's sunny out, that might be the same thing as another push to get that Jenny going too. So totally awesome. I think I'm gonna sell the little Ryobi generator inverter because I don't need it and I could use the cash for other fixes. I was actually talking with the uh, van girl she might end up buying the generator and then I can get some fixes done. Uh, and I'm going to do a whole, you know, routine. I'm going to figure out exactly everything that needs to be done with this Tioga because, you know, I'm not stressed and it's totally okay, but this, it needs a lot of work. Uh, some of the most important things are tires. They're from 2002 and they're literally cracked all over the place. Very scary. So those all need to be replaced. There's also a pulsating in the brake when you hit the brakes anytime it pulsates and the whole thing by you know what i'm not even gonna get into all this because we'll deal with this later it's no biggie i'm just saying so maybe i'll do an inventory and start uh, working on how i'm gonna do all that together but as far as getting this motor home i will say uh i know some people don't like the seven day lag you know because yarby posted a video and then you had to wait seven days to get it for me you know to find out if it was actually true that i got the rv you know, um, it's all about safety. I have learned some tough lessons here uh, in the last couple years being on YouTube. So I know that I do not want to spoil it. I know that if you give too much information out there, there are people who literally, like terrible people out there who will just crush it. They will do everything in their power to make sure that nothing good happens in my life. Many of my followers know exactly what I'm talking about. So. I had to be very careful about this RV deal in California until it was official. And actually, I've kind of wanted to wait till I'm even back in the Northwest before telling people because it just, you know, I just don't want any, any problems, you know, like, yeah, any problems. Something really weird with like licensing and getting my insurance and everything figured out in this. And I didn't want there to be any problems, but I had to do it California's way. So I had to go to the DMV. They call them DMV down there instead of DOL, up where I live, so. Anyway, um, the only thing that I could do, since the tabs were good and it's California licensed, um, I had to just have it transferred into my name, and then the title is going to be sent to my address in Washington State. Now that could take four to six weeks. In the meantime, it's going to remain to have California registration. So that's the way it works, because my state won't physically uh, let me switch it over and get Washington plates until I have the physical title. So the, the the temporary registration that I got in California, that's not enough to get plates and re-register it in Washington State. I have to wait till I physically have the title. It's no biggie. It's just a really weird that when you're working with two different states, it gets really weird and confusing. And I'm not gonna, you know, it, it's I'm licensed. I already called Geico and I've already switched it over. The only thing I haven't done is I need to switch over my AAA back from premium car to premium RV and probably pay the difference, but uh, insurance is taken care of. It's registered in my name. Totally cool. Good to go. I'm happy. I got
now one more place I want to stop because I know there is an RV wrecking yard, salvage yard, somewhere in Washington State, Chehalis, Centralia area. So I'm going to stop here, get directions, look it up, find out if they're open. They have weird hours. And then uh, we'll go check out, see if I can get some interior drapes, curtains. I also need screens on the windows. There's no screens on the window, so a few things I want to look at. 